This is the present image. Kayong mga nasa online, you should visit the Virgin. She is very beautiful. Black but beautiful. This is how she looks like today. Ganyan. At andito sa uh, harap natin, there is no need for us to look into that photograph. You uh, lapit kayo sa mahal na birhen mamaya and try to see uh, how she really looks like and how beautiful she is. There are some damages, most especially sa ilong na part and somewhere below the eyes, mga paint na natanggal, but uh, uh, pwede itong ma-restore. It's still uh, mag maganda pa rin ito. Okay, ito lang ang sa back portion because you cannot see it mamaya. This is the back portion of the Blessed Virgin. The back, back portion of the Blessed Virgin is very interesting. Inter interesting ito. Dahil there is a what we call a suksuk. Suksuk means you tuck in. In the olden times, ang mga queens would have long Mahaba na damit, mga regalia. Kaya itatak in nila ngayon. Tuck in is very interesting because this is a very Filipino artistic tradition. Very Filipino artistic tradition. Ang question ngayon will be this. Kung ito, ang mahal na birhen, gawa sa Mexico, bakit meron siyang suksok? Kung galing siya sa Mexico, bakit may suksuk ang mahal na birhen if this suksuk in the Blessed Virgin Mary's images is a very Filipino tradition? Bakit meron? Now, these are things na mapag, ma, ma, that will pick, tickle our minds. No? Bakit kaya? Bakit kaya? Uh, if you would also notice, medyo nasira na, but you can peep in at makita ninyo uh, there is a tela. It's a gold, gold, golden cloth. Mga gold na ano ito, pinag, uh, parang ano bang tawag niyan? Sa, basta ginawang tela. Sa likod. To cover the pine wood or cedar wood na gawa ang katawan ng mahal na birhen. In other words, the Virgin Mary really came from abroad dahil we don't have a cedar wood in the Philippines. Wala tayo. Doon yan sa labas. So, ang mga kahoy, lahat ng ito is made of cedar wood. Cedar wood. Okay. This is how the Nino, the Santo Nino de la Salud, looks like. Maitim. This is made of ivory, a precious material. Ganyan na ganyan. There are some artists religious artists who would associate, ah, hindi naman, compare the Santo Nino de la Salud with the Santo Nino of Tarnate, Cavite. Magkapareha. Medyo maliit lang tinan ang, muk ang mata, but uh, actually, if you would look closer, hindi proportion yung mata. Uh, may similarity ang dalawa. No? So, a lot of people have noticed that na ang mata ng Santo Nino, ah, ang Santo Nino looks like the Santo Nino in Tarnate, Cavite. Okay. So, origins. Origin and provenance of this image. We will base kung saan ang galing ang image na ito in a document written by an Agustinian Recollect Friar, Fray Andres del Espiritu Santo, and he wrote it in 16... 47. Kung saan ang galing ang mahal na birhen. Sabi niya, this image was brought from New Spain. New Spain is a term gamit nila sa present Mexico. Ang tawag nila sa Mexico before is the New Spain. Mahilig ang mga Kastila sa ganyan. Kaya for example, sa Philippines, na miss nila ang uh, Segovia so pinangalanan nila ang bagong lugar sa Philippines Nueva Segovia Nueva Ecija ano pang mga Nueva niyan 
dahil na miss nila ang mga lugar nila doon sa Spanya. No? So, Mexico, ang term ng gamit ng Mexico before was New Spain. Okay, the image was brought from New Mexico by some religious who arrived here that year. Kung anong year yan, pag-uusapan natin mamaya. It was given to them by the discalced Carmelite nuns of a convent in Mexico. Ang image na ito pala, galing sa mga Carmelite nuns. Mga Carmelites. Related ito sa original, unang image na binigay ng mga Carmelites sa mga recollects. Anong image yun? Ang Our Lady of Mount Carmel na nasa San Sebastian. It was the first image na binigay ng mga Carmelite nuns na ito. It was given as a token of their devotion so that they might find for it a decent place here as its dwelling place. Ang purpose. Bakit ibinigay? First purpose. Bakit ibinigay ang image na ito? So that it will be, it will find, ang mga frailes might find for it a decent place here as its dwelling place. The recollects were asked to construct a shrine for her. Kawawa ang mahal na birhen dahil based on the history she has never found a real home. Wala pa. Baka tayo, baka sa henerasyon natin ma-fulfill ang promise na yan. Kung bakit ibinigay ang Virgin Mary, the first purpose, hanapan ninyo ng lugar sa Pilipinas where she can be venerated, a place worthy for veneration for her. But the second purpose might serve as their protectress and refuge in their journey. Sa dami na nating natutunan, ano? Sa first, ano pa lang na ito? Information na ito? Ang dami na nating alam. She came in, galing sa Mexico, binigay ng mga Carmelite nuns, for the purpose of first and foremost na pagawaan siya ng templo or shrine where she can be venerated worthy of her and then fourth so that she will be the protectress and refuge of those who are traveling from Mexico to the Philippines. We have located kung saan ang monastery na ito. Based also on a document older than this The name of the monastery is San Jose. Monasterio de San Jose. And ito yung address nila. 8 Orient, Oriente, numero 16, Puebla, Mexico. Ito ang pinanggalingan ng Lipti of Mount Carmel in San Sebastian and also ang image na ito. Presently, yan. Yung nasa bilog, that is the exact location of the monastery mapahanggang ngayon. Before, it used to be a very big property, pero ngayon maliit na lang. But it is the exact monastery. It is our hope. Hope. It is our hope. Um, When San Sebastian, when, the, when they celebrated the arrival of the image noong 2018, there were attempts to reach out to that monastery. There were attempts. And I was actually waiting na ma-reach out nila ang monastery so that we can also reach out to that monastery and tell the sisters, sisters, ang ibinigay ninyong image, Andito pa. Pero ang shrine na hiningi ninyo, hindi pa namin na ipatayo. It would be a very good project for us on fraternity to connect 
with that monastery to tell them na inalagaan natin ang image na ito. And we are in the process na pagawaan ito ng shrine. Okay. So this is how the interior of the monastery looks like. Ito yung chapel nila. Those are the nuns. May grill yan. And then ito yung sa, sa luna, yung nasa gitna ng monasteryo. This is the cloister. Ito yung mga rooms ng mga madres. And this is the luna, yung garden na nasa gitna. That is how the monastery looks like ngayon. Okay. So, sino ngayon ang nagdala ng image of Nuestra Señora de la Salud from Mexico to the Philippines. Based on the records, ang nagdala ng image na ito is the seventh batch of the Augustinian missionaries in the Philippines. The seventh batch. And ang batch na ito was headed by Fray Pedro de la Resurrección. Ito ang itsura niya ni Fray Pedro de la Resurrección. Together with his batchmates na mga missionaries. Those are the mas klaro doon sa TV. So, yung batch, seventh batch is composed of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 missionaries. 15 Agustinian Recollect missionaries. If I'm not mistaken, I think dalawa ang um, sa batch na ito namatay sa dagat along the way. So, ito yung batch ng uh, Agustinian Recollect, seventh batch of the Agustinian Recollect missionaries who came from Mexico and sila ang may dala ng mga, ng Our Lady of Health, Nuestra Señora de la Salud. Atras tayo ng isang, isang, ng uh, photograph ng monastery. We might ask the question, bakit ba ang Carmelites nuns, discals, ha, mga discals, the OCD, hindi the Carmelite nuns, the discals Carmelite nuns. What are they so close with the recollects na every time the recollects would pass through Mexico would always visit and stay in their monastery. Ay, hindi naman stay. Would frequent the monastery to celebrate Mass, to hear their confessions, to give conferences. Bakit doon sa mga discalced Carmelite nuns? Mamaya pag-uutapan din natin ito. Mamayang hapon. Pero i-forward ko na earlier. Dahil ang OAR at ang OCD are mga tinatawag natin bad to say but the mga rebelde sa mga orders nila. They were the ones who reformed the order. Ang Carmelites, there were some problems, nag-reform and it was the OCD. Ang Agustinian order, nagkaroon ng problema, na-reform ang pangalan OAR. In short, these two groups are what we call reform groups. Kaya close yung dalawa. In fact, ang foundress ng OCD, the Carmelite nuns, who is Santa Teresa de Avila, ang kanyang spiritual director is Fray Luis de Leon, who is an Agustinian rector. Di ba may, may, may isang ang may isang Carmelite spiritual director si uh, Santa Teresa si Juan de la Cruz Saint John of the Cross but she also had another spiritual director in the name of Fray Luis de Leon who is an Agustinian recollect and was one of those who wrote the life the rule of life of the Agustinian Recollects. Kaya close yung dalawa, ang dalawang congregation. Kaya nga every time they would go to Mexico ang mga OAR, they won't go to other monasteries except in the, 
Discuss Army Life Nun. No? Okay, so that's how close they are. So there were some questions kung kailan dumating ang image na ito in the Philippines. Looking at the documents, walang exact date na sinulat kung kailan. There were some descriptions, there were some mga indirect uh, proofs. And let's cut it short. The image left, left Mexico in 1633 and arrived in the Philippines in 1634. Kaya may nakasulat dyan sa table natin, 1634. So in how many years from now, we will be celebrating the 400th arrival of the Virgin Mary. It should be a very big occasion. And hopefully by that time, 400 years after, may shrine na of her own, ang mahal na birhin. So, 1634. No exact date kung kailan, but hunch namin will be, it must be February. February of 1634. Karamihan na mga ships would come at that time. So, 1634. Ang question natin ngayon, bakit ang pangalan niya, Nuestra Señora de la Salud? Bakit? Unlike the first image na binigay nila na Our Lady of Mount Carmel, obvious na Our Lady of Mount Carmel dahil she was dressed as Our Lady of Mount Carmel. May scapular, may baby Jesus na may dalang scapular. Ang La Salud, bakit ang pangalan La Salud? Are we really sure na La Salud ang pangalan niya in the monastery? Hindi natin alam. Basta ang documents says na binigyan ng image si Fray de la Resurrección ng small image and there was no name. Pero bakit pagdating sa Pilipinas naging Nuestra Señora de la Salud. Bakit kaya? And we will base that on the document, document written in 16, 1647 by Fray Andres del Espíritu Santo. Tama ba? Yan ba nakasulat dyan? Yes. Ganito ang nakasabi doon. It happened that during, that during their long journey, long journey, ang journey from Mexico to the Philippines, Hindi gaya ngayon, sa aeroplano will just take one day, 24 hours. Noon, it will take months. Months and months. It happened that during their journey, when their lives were in great danger on account of several occasions of storms, infirmities, they invoked her with devotion. Ang pagbiyahe noon, hindi gaya ngayon, it's comfortable. Aircon, may mga waiting lounge pa, may mga pagkain na masakarap. At the time, when you travel, it is really a sacrifice. Sacrifice dahil pag may nagkasakit sa isang galyon, puridas lahat. Pag may nagka chicken pox, Isa o dalawa sa barko, lahat ng nasa barko, magkaka-chicken pox. Kaya ngayon, pag sa isang bahay may nagka-COVID, kuridas COVID lahat. Ganun na ganun ang situation nila. Hindi lang ganun, aabot pa sila sa dagat ng ilang buwan, kaya there will be times, they will have storms. There will be times na walang hangin, Nakatenga ang barko, ang galyon. Hindi lang ganon. There will be times they will be approached by pirates. Meron pang iba. There will be times maubusan sila ng pagkain at tubig. Biyahe nila buwan-buwan. Kaya talagang they don't travel in comfort. Walang ligo-ligo. Kasi walang tubig. Pag may tubig, Rasyon, rasyon. Kasi nga, hindi ganun kadali. 
At ang pinaka-delikado will be, pag may nagkasakit, lahat magkakasakit. And so, sabi nga dito, on account of several occasions of storms and infirmities, they invoke her with devotion. And His Divine Majesty, through the intercession of the Virgin, aim to listen and answer their petitions and prayers. Kaya nga, when they arrived in the Philippines, nobody died in that they named the Virgin ito. Saan ang mga nag-travel noong 1634 wept, begged, and kneeled in front of her, named her La Salud. Dahil, dahil walang nagkasakit, maybe meron, pero walang namatay. In that group, most especially sa barko na yun, kung nasaan ang mahal na birhin. Most especially kung saan ang galiyo. Understand na hindi lang isang galiyo ang magbabiyahe, ha? Marami yan sila, apat o lima o anin. Kung nasaan ang mahal na birhin, walang namatay. Ang namatayan yung kabila kung nasaan yung mga trailers, yung ibang trailers. But in Alion, where the virgin was, nobody died. May nagkasakit, but they were safe. That's why when they came to the Philippines, she was named La Salud. Klaro na ngayon, klaro na ngayon. Ano? Kaya noon pa lang, sa barko pa lang, she was really uh, invoked as a patroness for help para sa kanila. Okay. Ito is very interesting. Interesting ito na, na information. Um, there is in the documents makikita natin kung sino ang first devotees ng mahal na birhen. Who were the first devotees ng mahal na birhen? Understand that during that time, the Philippines, ang mga Filipinos were not Filipinos. What I mean is, hindi gaya ngayon, lahat tayo Filipino. Whether may dugong Amerikano ka o German or French, Filipino tayo lahat. Noon hindi. May mga peninsulares, may mga insulares, mga pinanganak dito ng mga Kastila, may mga Kastila na pinanganak doon sa Spanya at nandito sa Philippines. May mga tinatawag silang mestizos, may mga tinatawag silang chinos, may tinatawag silang naturales, natives. Mga walang dugong bughaw yung mga totoong Pilipino. But at that time, ang mga tinatawag nilang Filipinos ay yung mga Kastila na ipinanganak dito sa Pilipinas. They were the Filipinos. Ang mga Filipinos na talagang native, ang tawag sa kanila, naturales. Naturales. Okay. Kaya makikita nyo dyan sa photograph, Naturalis. Yan. Naturalis. Nasa taas. And sa tabi may nakasulat Tagal Tagalos. So this is how the native of Manila looks like before. At the time, mga 1600s. At the early age of our uh, as a nation. Very age. Early age natin. Okay. So this is a very very interesting information. Dahil the first Devotees, ang mga unang adik sa Nuestra Senora de la Salud, ito. The superior, based on 1647 na document, the superiors decided to place the image in the convent of Bagumbayan where it is venerated with reverence. So ang unang simbahan niya nasa Bagumbayan. Where it is venerated with reverence but the faith, by the faithful and visited Particularly by the natives. By the natives. Who continually flock to it, carrying candle wax and other offerings in addition to the many devout novenas celebrated upon their request. 
Unlike other images of the Blessed Virgin, walang mga documents that would say sino ang mga devotees nila. Itong mahal na birhin na ito, nakasulat na mga devotees niya, ang mga unang adik sa kanya, were the naturalis, the Filipino. Bakit kaya? There are two reasons why. Mamaya, pag-usapan natin. But the first reason, and I believe this is the first reason, it's because she is black. And the Filipinos, the naturalists at the time, wala pang gluta, wala pang belo, wala pang pampaputi. At ang mga Filipinos at the time were not crazy na magpaputi pa, talagang brown na brown. And because she's dark, the Filipinos at the time talagang felt the affection, parang connection with that black image. Kaya sa kanya nagpuntahan. Bakit? Yung ibang images kasi are made of ivory. Like the, the Del Carmen, like the Santo Rosario, like the Consolacion, they were made of ivories. They were copies of mga European colored white skin. Pero ito, itim. Kaya doon magpuntahan ang mga natives. And that's the first reason why. No? So, the natives were their first devotees. Mga unang adik sa Lasalu. But the second reason is this. Dahil ang first shrine, ang unang simbahan ng Lasalu is if this is in Tramuros, ang unang simbahan ng Lasalud is nasa labas. Extramuros. Extramuros. At ang Intramuros noon is not like the Intramuros today. Na it is open 24 hours. Noong unang panahon, ang, in ang Intramuros is first and foremost only for the Spaniards. For the uh, Peninsulares, Insulares, Filipinos, and Mestizos. Para yung lahi na yun lang. Ang mga natives and mga chinos, out. Itsipwera. Makakapasok lang kayo doon sa umaga. Pag binuksan ang gate ng Intramuros, pasok. Pero in the afternoon, isasarado ito. Kaya kayong hindi mga Kastila, Mga hindi Filipinos, hindi Mestizos, Ichipwira. Out. Sa labas. Eh, dahil ang simbahan ng Lasalud, nasa labas, when the church, when the gates of Intramuros are closed, nakasarado, ang mga Katoliko na wala sa loob ng Intramuros, ang puntahan nila, ang Lasalud. Ang takbuhan nila in times of danger and in times of difficulty, walang iba kundi ang lasalud. Dahil ang simbahan niya nasa labas. She is really a Filipino. Filipino ang Filipino. Bakit masasabi natin Filipino ang virgin? Sa color, yes, she is. But also with this thought, you have to understand that the Virgin Mary and the Nino, ang mga piyesa na ito, are made of ivory. Ivory, garring. In 1600s, walang ivory carving tradition ang Mexico. Walang ivory sa Amerika. Wala silang ilipante doon. Lahat ng mga ivories nila nang galing sa Asia. Ang mga religious ivory carvings would either come from Macau, Macau, Goa, or the Philippines. 
For those who are interested and have a know-how sa religious art, if you would notice, may mga iba-ibang distinction yan. Those made in Goa, ibang style. Uh, yung gawa sa other places. May distinctive mark ang Filipino religious carving. And for those who are experts, we'll say, ito, most shalidanin niya. Gawa. Dito. In short, ang birhin na ito, ginawa sa Pilipinas ang ivory, inukit, dinala sa Mexico through Acapulco trade. Doon inassemble, nilagyan ng mga bato-bato and all those silver accessories and was brought back to the Philippines. In short, OFW. Ang birhe na ito. OFW. She really is a Filipino. Color pa lang at gawa. Filipinong-Filipino. Ang kamay at ang baby Jesus. So, that's the reason why hindi tayo magtaka kung bakit ang mga Filipinos adik na adik sa berheng ito. Dahil taga-Pilipinas ito. Huwag kayong, ma, huwag kayong magulat. No? Marunong magtagalog ito. At naintindihan niya ang mga supplications ninyo in Tagalog. Um, Sideline lang tayo, konti, no? Kanina, we prayed the novena, the perpetual novena, English. And uh, talagang we thank uh, the Lord for uh, na-prove ang Tagalog, uh, ang, ang novena na yan. But last week, last week, no? Natanggap natin ang translation ng English na yun, novena. And uh, ano bang Tagalog sa translate? Dinaybay. Sinalin. Thank you. Removing. Sinalin ito sa Tagalog by the kagawaran ng wikang Filipino. Kagawaran ng wikang Filipino. It was translated from English, yung dinasal natin kanina, to a Tagalog version by the kagawaran ng wikang Filipino. Pag ginamit nyo yun, mas grabe, touching talaga siya. Dahil it is our language. Kuhang-kuha niya ang, ang hinagpis to those who are suffering. Talagang iba. Iba ang dating, no? Kaya nga, when we pray, iba, iba ang dating when we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, pero abagi noong Maria, napupuno ka ng grasya. So when you ask the Virgin, you ask her in Tagalog, dahil Filipino ito. She is a Filipino. She can understand Tagalog. Okay, so this is the present. This is the present location of the old San Juan de Bagumbayan Church, the first Augustinian Recollect Monastery in the Philippines. Ito, itong area na ito is the Manila Hotel. So ito yung ano bang street na ito? Padre Burgos. Yan Maria Orosa na street, and then this is the Japanese garden. Ito ang planetarium. Familiar kayo sa Luneta? That whole area na yan, planetarium, planetarium hanggang dito sa Maria Orosa Street, that is the exact location of the first convent, Agustinian Recollect Convent in the Philippines. That's the exact location. Ano na yan ngayon eh? MWSS, itong, itong corner ata na ito? Para or somewhere here. And that is the exact location, ito, ito, itong corner ito, is the exact location of the church ng simbahan. Dahil ang portion na ito will be the monastery and the gardens. Ito ang exact location ng simbahan. Yung corner na yan. And if you go to that place ngayon, may mark ng National Historical Institute. May marker doon na ito ang simbahan ng San Juan de Bagumbayan kung saan naka-enshrine ang Lasalud. So that's the original location. So wala na. Uh, wala na tayo ngayon. 
Wala na yan. Hindi na sa atin yan ngayon. Okay. So, ito ang question ngayon. Sabi ko nga, yung tatlong black images are very famous now. And parang nawala sila sa loob. Parang hindi kilala. Parang tayo lang ang nakakakilala kay sa loob. No? Uh, pero very famous ang black virgin na ito noong 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. So ito ang exact statement ng isang document written in 1664. Thus, the fitting reverence to that image increased until it became one of the greatest in the Philippines. Isa sa mga pinakasikat sa Pilipinas. That was 1664. Sikat na sikat ang lasalud. Gaano kasikat? Proofs. Ang altar niya sa Bagumbayan was filled with golden, silver, and gold ex-votos. Iba ngayon, binalik na natin yan. During novena, ang daming nagbibigay ng alahas. Ang daming nagbibigay ng jewelries. Noong panahong yun, based on a document written in 1664, ang simbahan, ang altar, kung nasaan, ang lasalud, punong-puno ng gold and silver ex-votos. Ano ba ang ex-votos? Ngayon kasi, pag may pasalama tayo, anong ginagawa natin? We go to the parish office, give 50 pesos, and thanksgiving mass for graces received by just So, ngayon, pamisa kaagad. Before, hindi. Mas, mas grabe ang kanilang effort. Dahil during those times, ang gagawin nila, pag nahingin sila ng kalabaw, and if their prayer is granted, pupunta sila ngayon sa alahero. Kung kaya nila ang silver, paggawa sila ng silver, ang itsura, kalabaw, bibigay nila ngayon sa mahal na birhen o sa santo. Sumakit yung mata nila and they ask for the Lord's healing to the intercession of the saints. Magpapagawa sila ngayon ng mata na pendant ibibigay ngayon sa mahal na birhen. Ganun in the olden times. So, based on the document written in 1664, sabi nga dito, Because of the many marvelous and miraculous deeds that our Lord has done for the devotees of this holy image, we have to say that the entire, entire main chapel is covered with winding sheets of feet, heads, hands, arms, and other things that are ordinary placed before images that are objects of great devotion. Winding sheets of arms, mata, ilong, tenga, puso. Dahil ito, ang mga nagkakasakit noon, siguro na arthritis ang kamay, hindi magalaw, and then after praying, gumalaw, nagpagawa ng kamay. Kaya may mga ganyan, oh, kamay, mata, and many other things. Ganun kasikat. Ito is a chapel in in Italy, Blessed Muscati, and the wall is full of ex votos. Ganyan na ganyan ang itsura, maybe during the time ng Lasalud, and more than that, pasiguro. Ngayon hindi na natin ginagawa yan, but it's good thing that we have revived here in San Nicolas the giving of ex votos. Pero hanggang ngayon, in the provinces, ganun na ganun pa rin. An example of this is the Santa Lucia in Ilocos, patron of the eyes. That is Santa Lucia. Pero tingnan niyo yung damit ni Santa Lucia, may mga mata-mata. 
Ya lu mau mata-mata. Mata-mata, mata-mata. Sa ilokus, ganun pa rin sila. They would offer exact replica, uh, parang representation, kung ano yung grass yang binigay. Kung nakatravel ka, magpagawa sila ng airplano o barko, binigyan ka ng bata, magpagawa sila ng maliit na bata, gumaling yung paa mo, magpagawa sila ng paa. At ilalagay ngayon sa damit ng Santa Lucia. Yan o, may mga ex-votos yan. They will pin it to the dress. Apo Caridad, o vegan, a lady of consolation, if we would look into the belt, and doon ang mga ex-votos. May mga papaa, may mga kamay, may mga bata, may mga iba-ibang mga ex-votos na dyan. Made of silver, yung iba gold. Sa Ilocos, ang, pra ang, ang practice na yan, it's still ongoing. Dito sa, Pilip sa Manila, wala na. Ang daming nawawala sa Manila. No? Kaya we are reviving. Uh, the Dungao, for example, in San Sebastian, is a very good revival of that religious practice. And our practice ngayon, dito sa San Nicolas, for La Salud, the giving of ex-voto is a very good religious practice, the revival of that practice. No? So mukhang marami na rin ang nagbibigay no? ngayon. Marami na nagbibigay. Okay, so ganun ka-famous, puno ang simbahan. Okay, sabi din dito in a document of 1647, today, it is certainly the image that has more devotees in the entire island. Mas marami pa kaysa Santo Nino. Mas marami pa kaysa uh, sa Ina, sa Pina, Pina Francia. Mas marami pa sa Nazareno. Today, it is certainly the image that has more devotees in the entire island. Ang pinakamarami at that time. Bakit kaya? Nawala. Yun ang question talaga natin. You might ask, bakit ang Nazareno? Hindi. Ang dami ngayon. Ngayon. But at that time, you have to understand that the Nazareno was still in Intramuros, in San Nicolas. Pero ang mahal na birhen ng Lasalud, nasa San Juan di Bagumbayan, kung nasaan ang big boss namin. Nandun ang mga big bosses. Andun ang Father Puchal, andun ang, ang Procurador General, and the counselors are there. Kaya yung San Nicolas, yung, yung Jesus Nazareno at the time, hindi ganun ka big time dahil wala doon ang big bosses namin. Andun sa sa, sa Bagumbayan. Kaya the fiesta in Bagumbayan was big. Dahil andun ang mga big bosses. Kaya before the San Nicola, before the Nazareno, the Santo Nino and the others, she ang birhin na ito. Ang pinakamaraming devotees sa entire island. Grabe, no? Ngayon, parang nakalimutan na. Okay. Another document says here in 1664, for it is, for as it is said, the procession, ang procession ng mahal na birhen is one of the best functions that are seen in the Philippines. One of the best. If you look into the documents na nandun, na-publish natin sa coffee table book, pagbasahin ninyo ang, ang documents na nandun, it's so, the description of the procession ay talagang napakaganda. But more than napakaganda, it is there, written, ng sumasali sa procession, thousands 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 ang magdala ng kandila thousands sa mga bata uh, ang mga ang mga penitent mga penitent thousands ang mag-join sa procession para bang ano ba yan thousand malaki na i have to understand that in 1644 ilan lang tayo sa Pilipinas and not only that ilan lang tayo sa Metro Manila, which is the Intramuros area. 
Kaya pag umabot ka na ng 500, ang dami ng tao noon. So when you say thousands in 1664, abay talagang ang dami, millions na yan ang equivalent ngayon. And those who would join the procession, thousands and thousands. Magdala ng malalaking kandila, thousands. Penitents, thousands. So in short, talagang ang daming tao sa prosesyon ng mahal na birhin. Ang daming tao sa prosesyon ng mahal na birhin. Prosesyon also, not just ng mahal na birhin, but prosesyon ito ng kofradiya. Hindi lang ng mga members, ng mga devotees. But basically, it is the procession of the Kofradia members. It is the procession of the Kofradia members. No? Okay. So, ibig sabihin talaga nito, sikat na sikat ang mahal na birhen na ito. The question now is this. What happened? Bakit nagkaganon? Okay. So, there are four more or less reasons na we propose bakit nawala ang devotion na ito. First, the loss of her shrine. Nawala ang kanyang simbahan. Kaya nga, ang mahal na birhin ito, squatter. Wala siyang shrine of her own. Squatter ang mahal na birhin na ito. Nakikipira lang siya sa simbahan ng iba. Second, transfer of her peace date. Palipat-lipat ang kanyang fiesta. Pangatlo, absence of the father provincial. And pang-apat, wrong information given by Jaime Laya. Sir, if you're joining us, sorry to say, but I think you added to the reason why nawala ang devotion sa Lasal Hood. Okay, number one. Loss of her shrine. Ang mahal na birhen, sabi ko nga, in 1634, was enshrined in San Juan de Bagumbayan. In San Juan de Bagumbayan. In 1640, ano yan? Less than 10 years. Less than 10 years, ang mahal na birhen from San Juan de Bagumbayan nilipat sa Intramuros. Bakit? What happened in 1640? nagkaroon ng Chinese uprising. Nag-revolt ang mga inchik. And ang unang tirada nila mga simbahan. So dahil takot ang mga pare na masira ang image na ito, will be desecrated, tinago, itinansfer ang mahal na birhen sa Intramuros. In 1640 to 1641. One year. In 1641, dahil natapos na ang, ang Chinese Revolution, ibinalik na naman sa San Juan di Bagumbayan. Ibinalik in 1644. Until uh, 1641, until 1644. Four years. After four years, nagkaroon ng Dutch invasion. Dahil ang mga Dutch, bakit ba napunta ang mga taga-Netherlands dito sa Philippines? Dahil ang mga Dutch at Espanyol nag-away at dahil tapi tayo sa mga Espanyoles ay inataki tayo ng mga Dutch. Kaya nagkaloon ng uh, siraan na sira ang mga simbahan. So, during the Dutch invasion, sinira ang San Juan di Bagumbaya na simbahan kaya yung mahal na birhin ipinasok na naman sa Intramuros from 1644 until 1737. Noong 1737, pinagawa ang simbahan ng San Juan di Bagumbayan, so ibinalik na naman ang mahal na birhen. So, from Intramuros, labas na naman ang mahal na birhen. Ibinalik sa San Juan di Bagumbayan noong 1737. Noong 1737, 62, 30 years, more or less, sinira na naman ang simbahan ng San Juan di Bagumbayan this time by the British. 
due to British invasion. Nasira na naman ang simbahan. So bago nasira, ipinasok na naman na mga pare ang mahal na birhen sa San Nicolas sa Intramuros noong 1762 until 1945. Dahil yung simbahan ng San Juan di Bagumbayan hindi na naitayo ulit. In 1945, anong nangyari? Ang kagagawa ng mga Amerikano, binomba ang San Nicolas dahil ang San Nicolas ang dito area na ito. Ginawa nila ngayon entrada, entrance for the war vehicles na makapasok sa Intramuros. So binomba ngayon ang Intramuros, most specifically ang San Nicolas was the most sa lahat ng building doon talaga ang pinakasira. Sirang-sira, ang daming nawala sa atin doon sa Intramuros, sa San Nicolas. So yung mahal na birhen ngayon, noong 1945, nilipat sa San Sebastian. In 1945, naiwan sa doon until 1970, Noong 1970, itinayo ito kasama yung kumbento sa kabila. At dito lumipat ang Father Vicar Provincial noong 1970. And when the Father Vicar Provincial transferred from San Sebastian sa lugar na ito, noong 1970, daladala nila ang Nuestra Senora de la Salud dito. In 1970, the Philippines hindi na naging province, hindi na naging provincia. Nahiwala na siyang father provincial dahil the father provincial decided to go back to Spain noong 1970. So noong 1970, the Blessed Virgin was here. Kung makapasok kayo dun sa kumbento, andun siya sa main door area. Dun siya nakalocate. Pagpasok mo kaagad, nandito sa kabila. Uh, until 1988. Ano ba nangyari noong 1988? Noong 1988, ginawa ang Recoletos de Miranila, ang ating theology center sa Miranila. This small virgin, dinala doon sa seminaryo at nilagay sa chapel ng mga novices noong 1988. Few months after, na-realize nila na, uy, kaluma na pala ng mahal na birhe na ito. She's really very precious. So, para hindi masira at dahil gumawa tayo ng museum, she was donated by the Father Vicar Provincial sa museum in 1988 hanggang 2016. If you add it all, nagkaroon ng 10 transfers. Sampung beses na lipat-lipat ang mahal na birhen. Anim na shelters or shrines saan siya napunta-punta. And because of those numerous transfers, the devotees lost track kung nasaan na ang mahal na birhen. Hindi na nila mahala. This is the reason why ito, sa mga those of you who are into business, ito ang reason bakit hindi kayo pwedeng matransfer, transfer ng lugar. Dahil hahanapin kayo ng suki ninyo. Have you noticed? Ang SM, hanggang ngayon, kahit gaano ka ang Tapsi Turby, yung kalsada dyan sa original store nila sa Arangke, oh, yung, ah, ha? Kiyapo area, bakit minintain nila? They have a lot of money. They have beautiful locations. Bakit pa sila magmaintain doon? Dahil yun ang original nila na site. Ang mga suki nila pupunta pa rin doon kahit papano. So ganun na ganun ang nangyari. Lipat ng lipat, nakalimutan, nawala. 
Ganun na ganun din ang fiesta. Ganun na ganun din ang fiesta. The original fiesta of Our Lady of Health is third Friday of Lent. Sabi ko nga, penitential virgin ito. Kaya recollection din natin ito. Supposed to be. Third Friday of Lent. For whatever reason, hindi namin alam, transfer sa April 28. Ang Lent, di ba palipat-lipat? Maybe that's the reason why ipinako nila sa April 28. There was a time na from third Friday of Lent naging April 28. For whatever reason, hindi namin alam. Next, itinansfer na naman ang fiesta na mahal na Birhen sa Saturday nearest to March 19. Dapat ngayon, fiesta ng mahal na Birhen. Dapat ngayon. Next, tinansfer na naman siya sa February 11. Feast of the Virgin's Purification at that time. Ngayon, ang purification is February 8 at ano? Candelaria? Parang ganyan? February 2. February 2. February 11. Naging February 11 ang feast ng Virgin during the Virgin's Purification. Meron din siyang feast sa November 17. Nilipat na naman sa November 17. Virgins betrothal to Saint Joseph. And we were, when we were making the coffee table book and the novena, we also discovered na meron din siyang fiesta. Nilipat din ang fiesta niya sa August. Hindi na isulat dito. Pero it was discovered in August na meron siyang fiesta sa August. Eh anong nangyari ngayon? Habol ng habol ang mga tao. Yung iba nagkipiesta sa November, yung iba nagkipiesta sa Third Friday of Lent, yung iba sa August, yung iba sa March. Ay nawala ang piyesta. Kagasto naman ang mahal na birhina ito. Ang daming piyesta, lugi. So nawala. In the long run, basta ang daming piyesta, mawawala tayo. So ngayon, The Father Provincial has decided during the revival of the devotion, it will be November 17 from now on. November 17. So ito na nga fiesta natin. November 17. Okay. So that's the possible third, second reason. The third reason, bakit nawala ang devotion, it's because of this. And this is very interesting. Absence of the Father Provincial. Ano bang kinalaman ng Father Provincial sa mahal na birin? When the recollects came to the Philippines, sorry, ang, ang location ng residence of the Father Provincial was San Juan de Bagumbayan, Extramuros, 1606 until 1762 when it was destroyed totally destroyed by the British troops. Yan din, ang lugar na yan, ang naging tahanan ng Nuestra Senora de la Salud. And every time the Father Provincial would transfer residence dahil sa Chinese invasion, the Dutch invasion, papasok siya ngayon sa Intramuros, sunod na sunod, kasabay niya, ang mag-iska po ang mahal na birhin. So wherever the Father Provincial is, kasama ang mahal na birhin. In, nine, in 1763, dahil nasira na, naglipat ng residence ang Father Provincial here until 1945 sa Intramuros, kasama din ang mahal na birhin kasama din ang mahal na birhin. Wherever the Father Provincial is, kasama niya ang mahal na birhin. In 1945, noong nasira ang kumbento, ang Provincial House, lumipat ang Father Provincial sa San Sebastian, Manila. Ito sa likod is the exact location of the Provincial Ato. 
kung saan nakastay ang Father Provincial and the office niya, dyan din nakastay ang mahal na birhin. Until 1970. Noong 1970, sabi ko nga kanina, this is what happened. The Father Provincial decided, ayaw ko na dito sa Philippines. Nilipat na kami ng residence sa Madrid. Umalis ang Father Provincial noong 1970 and he transferred residence to Spain, Madrid. So in 1970, the Father Provincial transferred residence to Madrid, Spain while the Virgin was left alone with the Father Vicar Provincial. Vicar is the assistant who transferred residence in 1970 Brito. And without the Father Provincial, who is the official caretaker of the Blessed Virgin, nawala ang devotion. Ang devotion ng Mahal na Birhin totally got lost and forgotten since 1970. Nawala talaga. Noong 1970. Before, before 1970, there were still some devotees. Meron pang pumupunta sa San Sebastian. But when she was transferred here, nawala. Totally forgotten. Bakit? Dahil the Father Provincial is the caretaker of the Blessed Virgin. Nawala ang kanyang caretaker, napabayaan ang mahal na birhin. Kaya nga, ngayon, may provincial na tayo. May father provincial na ang Philippines. And ngayon din, ngayon din ulit, umangat ang debosyon ng mahal na birhin. Unusual. Bakit? Kung nawala ang father provincial, nawala din siya. Ngayon na andyan ang father provincial, simula na din siya ang revive It's because the father provincial is present the caretaker. Okay. And the last reason why, because of Jaime Laya. Si Jaime Laya is the uh, central director before. And he is a you know, cultural heritage worker, and like that. Dami niyang mga collections and everything. And in his book, Position, Sinulat niya doon, Nuestra Señora de la Salud, the image was venerated at the Recollect Order Mother House from 1600s. Medyo mali na, no? Both the church and the image were destroyed in the bombing of February 1945 at the end of World War II. Jaime Laya, who is a authority when it comes to this, wrote this statement, and many believe in him. But actually, kaming mga recollects, alam namin, hindi na siya. Alam namin, ng mahal na birhin ito, survived the bombing of 1945. Survive. So, paano siya na-survive? Ito, ang image of the bombing ng Intramuros. Yun ang simbahan ng San Nicolas. Talagang wasak na wasak. Yan, ang simbahan after the bombing. Wala na. Ang magandang kumbento sa gilid, destroyed. Totally destroyed. Ang pasad na lang ang naiwan and some ano, sa likod. Yan, at the back portion of San Nicolas. Makita nyo, sirang-sira ang San Nicolas. Binumbahan talaga ng mga Amerikano. So what happened? Paano ba na-survive ang La Salud during the war? When we were making the coffee table book, when we were making the coffee table book, we did not just rely on the documents that was presented to us We also ask our elders, 
nagtanong-tanong din kami. And according to our elders, ganito nangyari. Mga nakakatanda namin ha. Sa February, before the bombing of Intramuros, nalaman daw ng mga pari na may mga plano ang mga Amerikano na bumbahan ang Intramuros para mapatay lahat ang mga hapon. And so, because of that information, ang mga pari, iskapo at that pinakamadilim na oras ng gabi. And this is really the exact words. The darkest hour of that evening. Umalis ang mga pari together with the father provincial, headed by the father provincial. At dala-dala nila ang tatlong images. Dala nila ang San Miguel, which is now in the museum. Dala nila ang Cruz ng Kasiguran, which is also in the museum. At ang pangatlo is ang image of Nuestra Senora de la Salud. Is kapo daw sila, madilim na gabi, before the bombing, two days before or three days before the bombing, nagprosesyon sila, gabing gabi, galing sa Intramuros, papuntang San Sebastian. That is the oral history. Oral. Yan yung napasa-pasa. But the fact is far more uh, weird ang totoong nangyari. Paano siya na-survive? Ang totoong nangyari is this. Based on the documents, walang prosesyon nangyari. Wala. Ang totoong nangyari is this. Before the war, before, before the bombing, at narinig na ng mga pare na bubumbahan ang Intramuros. Ay, siya ako. Pala, wait lang na. Down to the crypt na. Crypt. Crypt na. Mga simbahan noon may mga crypt kung saan ang mga mga patay nilalagay. Ang mga buto nilalagay. Crypt na. Ano ba ng mga pare? Sinira ang mga crypt na. Ang mga nicho. Pwede ka na lumabas pa ako na. Ipinasin doon all the treasures of San Nicolas at isa doon ang mahal na birhin. Nangalo ito sa mga patay, sa mga mga buto-buto sa loob ng nitsyo, ang mahal na birhin na halo doon. But because of that, dahil ang kripta is solid, During the bombing, she was saved. Grabe ang istorya, no? Ang layo ng totoong pangyayari sa kwento-kwento ng mga pari. But come to think of it, this is also very something na for us, a reflection for us, that even in death, the Blessed Mother will journey with us. In our journey to the next life, because of that event, masasabi natin na ang mahal na birhin kahit sa kamatayan will always accompany us. In our good times, when we are happy, when we are sick, when we are dying, and when we are crossing over to the next life, the Virgin Mother would always be there to accompany us. And that's a very good thing. It's a very good thought na mahal na birhen na kasama ang mga patay sa ilalim. Walang ibang birhen na kagawa ng ganyan. Siya lang. Siya lang. Ang mahal na birhen na ipasok na kasama ang mga buto-buto ng mga ninuno natin. That's how she was saved. In 1945, sabi ko nga, until 1906, the Virgin Mother was hidden from the public's eye. Wala na. In 1945 until 1970, the Blessed Mother stayed in the sacristy of San Sebastian, Manila. Only those who are allowed to enter the sacristy can see the Blessed Mother. The rest, wala na. And in 1970, 
the Blessed Mother, ito, stayed here in the provincial aid. If you would notice ang background sa likod, yan, yung nandun sa kumbento. Yan yung nandun sa kumbento. Nandyan lang yan, sa gilid-gilid. When we were seminarians, nakikita namin yan, sa gilid-gilid. Kung alam ko lang, ganyan kamahal ang mga bato, tinakawan ko na sa noon pa. Pero we never thought na she was that precious. Hindi namin talaga alam. Andyan lang talaga siya sa gilid. Open for public. And then inakyat yan sa chapel. Andyan lang sa gilid yan. Pwede mong nakawa ng mga bato-bato and everything. Pwede, pwede. Noon. Sayang. Buti na lang. No, hindi. Buti na lang hindi. Kasi kung nanakaw ko, wala na ang mahalabirin ngayon. Okay. In December 5 of 2006, this was the first time after 1945, after 1945, that's how many years? Almost 30 years? 1945 to 2006, basta ganyan, bubuo ako sa mat. Mga 50 years. Dinala ang mahal na birhen at inilabas for the first time for public veneration doon sa San Sebastian, Manila, sa Quadrangle, when we celebrated the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the Recollects in the Philippines. She was placed in a center, in a prominent position, sa altar. Andun siya sa gilid, sa likod. This is the main celebrant, and andun yung altar ng mahal na birhen. And when some old deeds, senior citizens, age 80s, realized na ilalabas ang mahal na birhen at buhay pa pala ang mahal na birhen, some of those as far as Pampanga went to Matila that evening just to see the Blessed Virgin. Dalawang jeep yun sila, if I could still recall. Dalawang jeep, galing Pampanga. Just to see the Virgin. Matatlo, apat sa kanila, mga matatanda and the rest are the members of their family. Just to see the Virgin. Okay. So, noong December 5, 2016, the Father Provincial, the Father Provincial, finally and officially declared the revival of the devotion of Nuestra Sipra de la Salud. 2016 ang official na ni-revive ang devotion ng nasa, Nuestra Sinara de la Salud and this was the occasion after the Mass when that devotion was revived in 2016. Since 2016 hanggang ngayon 2021 malayo na ang naabot natin. Malayo na ang naabot. And these are the updates of the devotion to Nuestra Señora de la Salud. As I said, the Father Provincial has already officially declared that the feast of Nuestra Señora de la Salud will be November 17. So ready na kayo. Bago mag November 17, be ready. Because ito na, ito na yung mga araw para sa atin. The image has joined the famous Grand Marian Procession of Intramuros last December of 2016. It was the time that the Recollects parang announced to the Filipinos that the Virgin Mary, Nuestra Senora de la Salud, and her devotion will be revived. Doon, inannounce. Nagkaroon ng National Caravan noong September of 2017. Ibig sabihin, ang mahal na birhen nilibot sa buong Pilipinas in all convents, parishes, schools of the Augustinian Recollect Fathers and the Augustinian Recollect Sisters. Kaya ikot ng ikot ang mahal na birhen noong 2017. Nagkaroon na rin tayo ng novena, yung nine-day na novena based on the original novena ng 1800s. Inilabas na rin natin. At yan ang ginagamit natin before fiesta. Nagkaroon ng grand transfer o translation from Meranila 
papunta dito, ibinalik ang mahal na birhen dito sa November, noong November 2017. Noong November of 2017 was her first fiesta. After a long, long time. And many of you were witness to that. And then, noong November 2019, nagkaroon tayo ng chapel. Yun. For the public display of the image. For the longest time, the Virgin Mary has always been kept in the private chapel of the Father Provincial. And ang daming nagre-reklamo, bakit nakatago? So, noong November of 2019, nagkaroon siya ng chapel ngayon for the devotees na maka-venerate sa kanya. Because of the pandemic, the chapel is still closed. But we'll be praying that it will be open soon. Itong tap na ito, noong January, inapprove na. Finally, after sa napakatagal nating hintay, inapprove ng obispo ng uh, Arch uh, Diocese of Cubao ang establishment, re-establishment of the Cofradia. Nagkaroon na ngayon ng sabi ko nga ecclesiastical identity ang Cofradia. Hindi lang ito group, hindi lang ito club. This will now have its ecclesiastical identity. Okay. And also, sa 2021, nagkaroon tayo ng approval of the perpetual novena na pwede natin gamitin every day and uh, normally every Thursday. We will pray that every Thursday. And of course, ngayon ay sinimula na natin ang formation ng members ng Cofradia. Di Transito, di Nuestra Senora. So, uh, ito ang developments and this is the history of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hopefully through this small historical details, the history of the Blessed Virgin, uh, we would fall in love with her more and more. Ganun naman talaga, no? The only way for you to fall in love with a person is to know the history of and story of that person. Hindi ka pwedeng ma-in love sa isang tao nakita mo lang sa magasin. That's not falling in love. Siguro attraction, pero falling in love, hindi. It takes time. It takes a lot of things. And most especially, kailangan malaman mo yung tao niyan. Ganun din sa mahal na birin. We Maybe we have received a lot of graces from her, but to fall in love with her more and more, uh, ito ang paraan to know her history.